Mitt's a good man, and, and I think he would have been a good president. But I think it's time for us to move forward. If we're going to take a stark contrast between the tired old policies of Washington, I think we need to have a new approach, big, bold ideas from outside of Washington that have been proven. And in our state, we've shown that common sense conservative reforms can work. That's Scott Walker, of course, a name that is getting a lot of attention as far as 2016 is concerned. Mitt Romney facing some criticism from possible 2016 primary opponents. Governor Romney expected to mention his presidential, uh, his potential during this 2016 uh, speech that he's going to make today. It's a brief speech from everything that we're learning. Criticism is also coming from outside the GOP playing field, though. A former Michigan party leader saying, quote, Mitt Romney, Rip, Mitt Romney blew a golden opportunity. That was a winnable race given the state and the economy and low approval of the president. If, if Mitt Romney gets the nomination, I think Republicans are headed for another loss. Harsh. Sean Spicer joins me now, RNC Communications Director. Sean, welcome. Good to have you back. Good morning. So it Thank seemed you. like, you know, I mean, Mitt Romney's on the top of all the polls, every head to head that we see against Hillary Clinton. Obviously, it's very early in the game, but it seemed like a lot of people wanted him to get back in. And then he suggests that he might get back in and he's getting hammered out there in the press and other places. Well, look, I, the, by my count, I think we have 23 to 25 potential candidates that are seriously looking at this race. I think each one of them, whether it's Scott Walker, Rand Paul, Jeb Bush, Dr. Ben Carson, Ted Cruz, they're all going to go out and have to articulate, or even Mitt Romney for that matter, go out and articulate why they should be the future uh, standard bearer of, of our party and lead the country forward. So um, it's not, you know, at the end of the day, each one of these guys is going to have to make their case as to why that they're, they're going to be the best candidate, not just for the Republican Party, but for the best candidate to, uh, to, to lead the country as president. You know, there's also a piece in yesterday's New York Times that said that Chris Christie was telling his supporters uh, to relax, that everybody needs to slow down and to take this one step at a time and that, you know, it isn't down to two people yet, clearly. And you mentioned all the people out there. Uh, do you think that that's a wise uh, tack from him at this point? Well, like I said, we've got 23 to 25 really serious people looking at this race. Uh, the RNC's job is to be the league, if you will, and let the other teams or candidates, if you will, play their game. So I'm not going to comment on anybody's particular strategy, whether to get in early or late or how to announce or whatever. Um, that's why each one of these guys has got to figure out what's best for them. Uh, and then how to, how to play the game. But, uh, I, you know, that, that's one tactic I, I, to take. I, sure. I understand. I know where you're coming from. And obviously you want to keep the field uh, very wide. Everybody's welcome to join in, as everybody has said. July uh, is the announced date now, the 18th to the 21st, I believe, in Cleveland, Ohio, will be the Republican National Convention. Um, a month earlier than last time and two months earlier than the time before, right? Why? Well, by I mean, the, the reality is conventions got moved back. Uh, into late August, September, back in the 70s for campaign finance reasons when people were taking public money and they could access that money later in the calendar. The more that people and candidates on both sides have foregone that, uh, it makes a lot more sense to move the calendar up and allow candidates to access that general election money that they raise uh, privately uh, a lot earlier in the process. So it's going to give us a huge advantage over the Democrats. Uh, one of the things that we've really concentrated at the RNC is figuring out those mechanical pieces, the ground game, the digital operation, that we can hand all of our candidates up and down the ballot and give them that edge when it, goes, when it comes to uh, beating Democrats. Interesting. Uh, and we're still waiting to hear. Uh, we should point out those dates from the Democrats not released uh, as of this point. Uh, we also have some news that Joni Ernst, uh, the new senator from Iowa, is going to be the, right. do the response to the State of the Union address on Tuesday night. What, what can we expect to hear from her? Well, I think Joni Ernst is going to articulate the same thing she did in her campaign, which is a very positive vision uh, for alternative for the way forward, something that's focused on family, private, uh, private enterprise, how we can uh, grow solutions uh, that are not government-based. Um, Joni Ernst is a phenomenal pick. you got to commend Speaker Boehner. That couldn't have been better. She represents so much that's going to change in this country with leaders like her that have just emerged in the Senate. So I think you're going to hear a much, much different vision of where this country can go uh, on the, if Republicans were in charge from Senator Ernst, and you couldn't have picked better from that, than her. Well, looks like you're at a beautiful spot, beautiful day out there in California. Enjoy it, uh, and we'll be watching very closely. We'll see the uh, comments from Mitt Romney later today. Uh, Sean, thank you very much. Always good to have you with us. You bet. Thanks, Mark.